whether anybody else does it or not, help us to follow you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for coming up. You can go ahead back with your families. Let's continue in prayer. God, thank you so much for this day you've made. We rejoice and are glad in it. Even in the midst of the challenges, help us to trust in you and give us ears to hear your voice speaking to us and help us, no matter what anybody else does, help us to follow you. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. So a number of years ago, we were rafting on the Rogue River out in Oregon, and the first day, it was pretty easy going. It was just beautiful in this river. But we pulled over to the side to have some lunch. And my friend Mike says, you know, I thought this was going to be a lot more exciting than it is. And I said, you know, just wait. And sure enough, that afternoon, we headed into some rapids. And the rafts were just bouncing around. And Michael gets bounced right out of the raft. And I see him over the side like a wet rack, uh, kind of pulling himself up on the bank of the, of the river. It got plenty exciting for him. You need to be prepared. Like, that's what the guides we were with were saying. The rapids are coming. You need to be ready to hang on to the raft, make sure you're in there, and to be paddling hard because it's going to get challenging. In today's gospel lesson, we, well, actually the last several weeks, we've been in this section of the gospel of Mark in which Jesus is trying to tell his disciples the going is going to get tough. Like what's been happening so far is Jesus has been up in Galilee, this area that most of the disciples are from, and things have been going really well. There are some people that come from Jerusalem who aren't happy with Jesus and they challenge him, but for the most part, what's happening is crowds are coming to listen to Jesus, to be in awe as Jesus heals people, casts out demons. He feeds thousands of people with just a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish. Like, it's amazing. And the disciples are enjoying the ride. Like, this is great, Jesus. Let's just keep on going. You're Messiah. Let's just keep on going the way it's going and take over the world. And Jesus says, ah. he stops going with the crowds and he just kind of focuses in on these disciples, and he says, you need to know that the going is going to get really tough. In fact, the Son of Man, Jesus himself, that he, he's going to be handed over into human hands. He's going to suffer and die, and on the third day rise again. But we're in for some troubled waters. And if you're going to follow me, you too are going to be going through really difficult waters, waters that may even drown you, and yet you're going to need to trust God that God will raise you up. The disciples are trying to get this message. Jesus is trying to tell them that this is happening, this is where we're headed, and they're having a really hard time believing it, understanding it. And so they keep getting distracted by other things. They get distracted by... Okay, Jesus, whatever, but who's the greatest among us, you know? They start arguing about that. Or in today's lesson, they're going to say uh, there's this person who's not really a part of our gang, our group, who's not really following you, and he's casting out demons in your name. And Jesus is going to tell them, stop worrying about what everybody else is doing. You need to follow me. You need to dig in. In fact, you'll, you'll hear in this passage, there's this turning point where Jesus is going to tell them 
Stop blocking other people. If they're moving toward me, if they're doing good in my name, don't discourage them, encourage them. But you need to focus on you. You need to get your act together. You need to dig in with your paddle. You've got to follow me no matter what anybody else does. And he's going to say that in very graphic language. You'll hear this, the kind of language a rabbi of that day would use that sounds pretty dramatic, and it's not meant to be taken literally, but it's there to make a real point that Jesus is serious about this. You need to make sure that you're not worrying so much about everybody else, that you're not following me yourself. So I invite you, this is Mark chapter 9, beginning in verse 38. John said to him, teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, do not stop him, for no one who does a, a work of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water and to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you puts a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believes in me, it'd be better for you if a, a giant millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to, than to have two hands and be thrown into hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, causes you to stumble, tear it out. It's better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. And salt is good. But if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Do you see Jesus saying, look, the going's going to get tough here. Quit being distracted by trying to get everybody else to do their job, to do it perfectly. Make sure you're in the boat, that you are paddling hard, that you are ready for what's ahead. What a challenge for those disciples. Some scholars think that the, the, that last verse that talks about salt is actually uh, picked in, from various places when Jesus was speaking because all those lines have the word salt in it and they don't really think they necessarily fit together. But Jesus, certainly Mark, put them together to make a point. And if you think about salt, salt, it is... Um, preservative. It's a preservative, right? It keeps what's good alive or there so that it can be shared. It is something that brings out the best that's in whatever it's placed upon. The best flavors come out. And it's something that cleanses. You know, you put salt water on your cut and it stings a bit. It's, it's cleansing. And Jesus is saying that everybody's going to be salted. Everybody's going to be salted with fire, this cleansing fire. You're going to go through challenges. You're going to hear the word of God that can cleanse you, that can teach you. You're going to have the movement of the Spirit nudging you, making you uncomfortable and leading you to turn this way or that. But if you don't pay attention to the ways in which God would teach you through the challenges... 
If you become callous to the movement of the Spirit, the nudging of the Spirit, if you become deaf, if you deafen your ears to what God is saying to you through his word, then how can you make the salt of any use to you? Have salt in yourselves. Make sure you're allowing the salt of the challenges of the word of God, of the movement of the spirit, that you're allowing the salt to have its full effect. Have salt in yourselves. And be at peace with one another. Let God do this good work in you. Everybody is going to go through these things, but you need to make sure that you are letting God do that work in you. We have such a tendency to get distracted by what other people aren't doing or what they are doing that bugs us. I think about what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7. Do not judge so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, let me take the speck out of your eye, while the log in your, is in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. You see what Jesus is trying to say to us disciples? What God is saying to us this morning? We get it so distracted by trying to fix everybody else, trying to straighten all the things around us out, and we forget that the most powerful thing that we can do in this world is to allow God to do a good work in us and then through us in the world. We need to allow that salt to have its full effect so that we can be about what God is calling us to do, whether anybody else does it or not. This past week, we had Salem 101. And by the way, if you haven't taken that, we're going to encourage you to talk to me, be a part of that. But we had time this past week talking about our covenant roots, our denominational roots. And we talked about how when the denomination started, we called ourselves mission friends that the various churches around the country wanted to join together in order to do mission work that they couldn't do on their own. So together, we could send missionaries to Alaska, to China, and now around the world. Or the people here at Salem joined together, not just so we could worship here, but so that we could help other people, other immigrants who were coming into the Twin Cities, so that we could reach out to our neighbors and to the generations coming up to teach them about Jesus, to share the good news of God's love. The, the title that we gave ourselves in those beginning days was Mission Friends. We're on mission with all of our friends. The verse at the, the core as our denomination started was Psalm 119.63. It says, I'm a friend of all who revere you. You know, everybody who's on this mission, we're, we're friends together. It makes me think, we were talking about this, laughing about this uh, Wednesday night at Salem 101. Now, if those of you who were around when Bill Clinton was running for his first campaign to be president, the line was, it's the economy, stupid. Like, you got to make sure that's what people care about and that we are going to be fixing the economy. It's the economy, stupid. And as we think about our denomination, about our work, about what we're called to do, we would say it's the mission, friends. It's the mission, friends. This is what we're here for. This is what we're about. If we gather together and we think what it's all about is for us to be happy, for us to be growing, for us to be comfortable, then we've missed out on why Jesus has called you here this morning. It's not just so that you're happy, so that you have a fulfilled life. It's so that you join in with the mission that God has for us. This is what we are here for. It's the mission, friends. And God is calling us to move forward on this mission. And I want to just name three things. First of all, that we would make the mission the main thing. I've had a few meetings this past week, this past month, and sometimes when we get together, there's some tension because we have different ideas about how to move forward together. And what's been most helpful to me is for us all to say, yeah, the mission's what's most important. So let's make sure we keep our eyes on that, and then we can talk about how do we make this work? How do we go forward together 
through the challenges. Because if we keep the mission in front of us, well, we know we're all brothers and sisters at this. This is what we want. We want what God's calling us to do. We just struggle with, okay, how are we going to do that this year, this month, this week? And we can work that through because we all know we're mission friends, right? We're moving for this. Jesus is calling us. He makes it very clear to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's our mission. And do you remember the second commandment that goes with it? Love your neighbor as yourself. That's our mission. Whatever else you may be wrestling with in your relationships with your brothers and sisters here in the church or beyond, remember, our mission is to love God and to love neighbor, to love one another. All this other stuff we get distracted by, it's important. But if it keeps us from loving God and loving neighbor and loving one another, we're missing the point. We're called, as Jesus gives us this great commission at the end of Matthew 28, to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything Jesus has commanded us. That's our commission. We're called to do this. And if we're all caught up, distracted by our differences, our challenges, what somebody else should be doing, we're going to miss the point why God has called us together. But we're called to be about this, not just us becoming disciples. I want to encourage you to join these small groups that Pastor Terry was talking about. Please join a life group, a small group, so that together we can encourage one another for it. But don't just join for your own sake. Make this kind of sacrificial commitment because others need your help. Because we want to make disciples of all nations. Join a life group and invite somebody else to join it with you. Somebody who doesn't come to Salem to join in. So that you can say, you can listen to the sermon online and then join our group and we'll talk about it. And we can see how this might apply to our lives. This is a way we can actually not just help ourselves grow, but we can reach out to other people around us. Think about who you could invite here on Sunday morning or on Wednesday night or to whatever your activity might be. Remember, we're not just here to be disciples ourselves, to grow as disciples. We're here to make disciples. That's our, our mission. We need to make our mission the main thing. Otherwise, we're going to get distracted by all kinds of other stuff, and we're going to miss out on what God's calling us to do. The second thing is focus on our own attitudes and behaviors. It's so easy to focus on what other people are doing. Did you notice what that person, man, that attitude of that person just bugs me. Okay, okay. Let that remind you to look at your own attitude, at your own behavior. That's what's most important, is for you, no matter what anybody else is doing, to have an attitude, to have behavior that honors God, that helps us move forward, helps you move forward on the mission. I think about what uh, Paul says in Galatians chapter 5 when he talks about the works of flesh. You know, when we're trying to do God's work ourselves in our own power, he says, you know, it's things like enmity and strife and jealousy and anger, selfishness, dissension. Those are the things that come up when we're trying to do God's work and we're bugged by everybody else. But the fruit of the Spirit, he says... The attitudes God is calling us to nurture, to water, to ask God's spirit to bring forth from us, oh, that's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Whatever anybody else does, ask God to help you with your own attitudes and behaviors. The third thing, let the peace of Christ dwell in you. <laughs> let the peace of Christ, Paul says in Colossians 3, rule in your hearts. And then through you, in the world, in every situation that you enter into, start your day, maybe even just before your feet hit the floor. God, may your peace dwell in me. May I be centered in you and go forward into the world as a peacemaker just because of who I am, because you live in me. 
And so even when we go into difficult situations, when we're at peace in Christ, Christ's peace is in us, we bring peace into that room, into that relationship. Whatever anybody else might do, we're breathing in God's peace, God's spirit. We're praying, God, help me to be at rest, at peace in you. It changes everything everywhere we go. Whatever anybody else might do, let the peace of Christ rule in you and then through you in the world. I'm going to offer you three questions I want to ask real quickly. Just if you want to write them down or just think about them, but things to think about as we go forward, seeking to reconnect, keep reconnecting with the mission that God's given us, to make sure that whatever anybody else is doing, we are paddling hard according to what God's calling us to do. First one, question I'd ask you to think about is, who are the people you think of as them? You know, those people that bug you, annoy you, that are just not doing it right, that are ruining everything, whatever it might be. Who are those people? Can you pray for them? And can you ask God to help your focus not to be on them, but on you? Are they distracting you from paying attention to your own attitudes, your own actions? Who are the people you think of as them, those others? May they, when you see that, may it be a reminder to quit worrying about the speck in their eye and to look at the log in your own. Second question, what precious things get in the way of God's call for you? Like when Jesus talks about cutting off your hand, plucking out your eye, he's not saying it literally. What he's saying is that think of those things that are most precious to you, that, you know, your life, your body would not be the same without them, but they're getting in the way of you following me, of you being about this mission. Is there a relationship that's really meaningful to you, but is distracting you, keeping you from following God's call, living out who God's calling you to be? Is there a habit that you've got that's getting in the way of you being the person you know God is calling you to be? Is there an attitude that you're clinging to because maybe it even feels good, but it's not helpful in terms of loving God and loving neighbor and loving one another? If there's something like that, it's, it's time. God, help me to cut it off to throw it away. It's much better for me to enter life, enter the kingdom of God without that thing than to not enter the kingdom of God, God's purpose for me at all. And then finally, the last question. What is God calling you to do? To join in with more devotion to the mission to which God's calling us. What does it mean for you to dig in your paddle you know, that person over there, they may not paddle as well as you, or they might be much better paddle. It doesn't matter. What's God calling you to do with whatever the ability is that you have? I loved it. This morning, after the first service, somebody was sharing with me how God had led her, uh, somebody had suggested, you know, I think you'd be really good working with seniors who uh, need some attention. And she's doing it, and she's finding it to be great. It's just the right thing for her. She's visiting people. Another person was on one of our mission trips, and they just got feedback about the difference, that mission trip that we had from Salem over to the Czech Republic, the difference it's made in somebody's life. You know, maybe your gift, what God's calling you to do, is exorcism like that one person, or it's like Billy Graham preaching to millions, or maybe it's giving a cup of water to somebody who's thirsty. Maybe it's helping to usher on Sunday morning. Maybe it's joining one of these small groups and inviting somebody else to make that commitment with you. Whatever it is, let's do it. Let's join in with the mission. There are rapids ahead. There are challenges ahead. We need to be about the mission that God has given us. And as we do that, we will discover that Jesus is right there with us. And even through the rough waters themselves will come through. Well, we did that day after Mike got back in the raft, hooting and hollering. <laughs> like, this is great. 
Let's live this life God's given us. Would you pray with me? God, thank you so much for calling us into the rough waters together. Thank you for calling us to be with you on the mission. Thank you for the great joy that we experience, the successes, and thank you for being with us through those times when we find ourselves going underwater and we're not sure whether we're going to be able to come back up. Thank you that you are with us and calling us forward always through it all. Grant us the joy of connecting with and living out the mission that you've given us to the glory of God 